Now, let's go start first of all with all these um, terms. And these are the terms you need to know before you can go any further to do the monohybrid crossings that Mendel did. So we start off with what are homologous chromosomes? If you look at this, you will find that you normally get a set of chromosomes from the female parent and one from the male. So, a cell, and we speak from here, die nou as gepaarde chromosome in a cell, en van die een cell het jy gekry die 23 van die van die ma en 23 van die pa. Maar, as jy kyk na dit, dan sal jy sien, en jy gaan met die pelkies vir jou wees, dat hier die chromosom het verskillende gene op bepaalde plek, en hier die bepaalde plek waar jy hier die gene aantref, weet jy, verwees ons daarna as die locus, the locus of this gene on the chromosome. But you will see that the other chromosome, the matching pair, on exactly the same locus, you will find exactly the same gene. So what is it when we talk about the genes or the versions of genes? For instance, I started off by saying that we will start off with a, or we will use the color of petals. And as you look at that gene, that gene bepaalt a bepaalde clear. Met ander woorde, op homoloe chromosome, gaan die ander chromosome op die selfde locus, die selfde geen of die eigenskap, namelijk die kleur vir blomme dra. Maar wat gebeur as ons twee verskillende of alternatieve vir hier die geen eigenskap dra? Bijvoorbeeld, dit bly die geen vir, vir die kleur vir blom kleur, but the one, it is for red, that one codes for red, and the other one codes for yellow. So we have now a different version of a gene, and that is what we call the alleles. In other words, can we understand now that the term allele means for it's a gene and its partner? No. In other words, the alle or an allelic pair, the two genes that code for a certain characteristic, yes. such as petal color, although the one gene may determine a red petal color and the other a yellow. It's just an alternative. Right. So it's the two genes are called an allelic pair or the that's two right. alleles. Because I find that's something that the learners often have difficulty with to that's understand right. that concept. Yes. Goed, so a allele paar is dan die gene en sy maaikie, om het nou so eenvoudig te stel, die twee gene wat vir die selfde eigenskap kodeer. Goed. So, um, ons kan verder gaan en ons gaan kyk dan na een volgende term, homozygotis, homozygous alleles. If you look at that, you will find that both alleles code for exactly the same, in this instance, color. Precies die selfde kleur, namelijk geel. So, wonder wat sal hier die blom dan wees, die kleur van hier die blom, of die kroonblare van hier die blom, wanneer dit gekruis word? Natuurlijk geel. En as ons hier die twee, um, as hier die twee allele, dan bepaal wat gaan hier die kleur wees van hier die blom? Rooi. Goed. Maar, wat gebeur indien ons nou sit met een alleelpaar, waar die een kodeer vir rooi, en die ander een vir geel? Now we have to question, what will the offspring, the color of the offspring, or the what children or whatever you call it be, if we should cross the two. Here we have a characteristic and we have different alleles. Which one will be, as we say in the science, be expressed in the outer appearance? And we'll get a name for that too. And what we have found is that one, some alleles are dominant and, and the other one is normally recessive. So let's look at that. If that flower, the offspring are red, that means that one color was dominant and the other color, the yellow in this instance, was recessive. So we have a recessive allele and we have a dominant allele. And it's important to realize, Colin, sorry if I can no, no. interrupt you is that um, with the dominant and the recessive allele, the dominant is there, the color that you see in the outer appearance in this case is red. doesn't mean that the yellow disappeared, it is still there. It is recessive, it is suppressed 
by the dominant gene. In other words, um, it is still there, it is recessive, it can pop up in the next generation, don't think it has disappeared at all. It's simply that in the outer appearance, and we'll get a name for that just now, the dominant gene is expressed. And you have to know that's also the, a, an explanation of what dominant means. It is that the dominant characteristic is expressed in the heterozygous condition. In other words, where you have two different genes coding for the same characteristic. Let's go back and we see that when we do monohybrid crossings, we use certain symbols for these alleles. Now you will find here, since we have seen that the red was a dominant allele and the yellow was the recessive allele, you will see that we use both. We use a corresponding letter, the same letter, but for the dominant allele we use a capital letter and for the recessive allele we use the small letter. So the letters or the symbols will represent what we call the genotype of the, this um, type of the characteristic of this organism. So in, in the previous example that we have used, the genotype of that flower will be a capital R and a small r. Why? Because red was dominant and the yellow was recessive because the flower that we have seen was red. Now, not only the genotypes, remember the genotype is, is, is those things that you can't see. But if we physically see these things, now let's see. I wonder if you people can all help us here. If we should click on this flower, what color should this one be? Now, first of all, Let's go back to all the terms that we have used. Is this homozygous or is it heterozygous? Both the same alleles, which means this is homozygous. Is it red or is it yellow? The capital R indicates it's red because red was dominant. So this is homozygous red and the phenotype will be a red flower. Here we have two recessive alleles and the small r stands for what color? Can you, can you please um, type in and, and, and show us the I small see letters? Michelle and Landry has already Very typed good. in They're red. Quick. They are with us, yes. Good. So the second one. If we should click on this flower now, what color must this be? Very good. There we see um, well lead. Yachers. And Andre Adams as well. There are oh, lots through. of them coming through. The, the small r is for yellow, stands for the, for the characteristic of yellow. So, here the bloom is geel, because r, the klein r, is the recessive allele for geel. But omdat it homozygotisch geel is, gaan dit in die phenotype na voren kom. The third one. Hier sit ons nou met die probleem. Is dit homozygotisch of is dit heterozygotisch? Twee verschillende tekens hier sê vir ons dit is heterozygotisch. Een hoofletter en een klein letter. So is dit, homos is dit heterozygotisch jammer? Is dit heterozygotisch rooi of heterozygotisch geel? Ons wacht vir paar antwoord om dier te kom, zodat so ons weet jylle is met ons. Michelle en be? Shelton sê dit is al rooi wees. Waarom zal het rooi wees? Als jullie voor ons kan inzet, waarom denken jullie het rooi? Waarom moet het rooi wees? Jullie doen het recht. But why will it be red? Because red is the. Let's see if it's red. Yes, it yes. is red. But why red? Ons wacht voor jullie. Red is the. Dominant color, yes, well done. Moi Yes. So these are the terms that you can look at now and um, just to, to, to recap everything here, but this is also what you will find on the website that you have seen before you before we log in. So what is a gene? It's a star die gedeelte van DNA wat vir a specifieke eigenskap kodeer. And allele, 
Dit is een alternatieve vorm van een geen. In the genotype, die genotype, it's a description of the pair of alleles present for a characteristic and the phenotype. Of course, it is the outer appearance, external appearance, the things that you can see. The genotype, just remember genotype, you can't see it, it's on the genes. But the phenotype, those exterior, external characteristics, those things that you can see. Can I go for you so say, I think yes. African people have a foresprung what the klanke betreft. Yeah. Ge- genotype, genetic samenstelling. And phenotype, voorkomst. Mm. So, I mean, voorkomst and phenotype begin with the same thing, but the klank is the most important. Phenotype, voorkomst. Genotype, genetic samenstelling. Um, yes, so just to repeat in English, the genes, the genetic composition or combination, and phenotype is what you can see in the outer appearance. Um, let's have a look. Colin is going to continue. Look at the screen I'm with the different with terms. This, and then you can continue, Lorraine. So the other genetic ch- terms that you should know is homozygous, and um, where there's a pair of alleles, and both of them produce a characteristic of the same kind. For instance, here you will find, if you should write it in the genotype, they are both capital letters or both small letters. Heterozygous is where you will find two different um, um, alleles or, as you can see, symbols here. That means it is heterozygous. They are the same characteristic, but they have our alternative allele. Dominant the one that will be expressed in the phenotype and the recessive one, as Lorraine said, just remember, it does not disappear, but it is there, but it is only, it is dominated by the dominant allele and that is why it is a recessive allele. And um, Lorraine inserted this beautiful um, slide so that you can see. And um, especially two weeks ago, we referred to the DNA And here you can see, if we refer to a gene, a specific gene, then you can see that the gene is a long string on the DNA. It's a long section on the DNA. So this will code for one gene, and then here another gene will follow. So just to show you that these genes on the chromosome that we have pointed out, they are long strings of nucleotides that we will find on the DNA.